Hi everyone, welcome back to Ilum Sabers. Today's video is about something that I've been working on for a long time and I'm glad to finally get to show it off. This is Anakin's lightsaber from episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and this is a Watto's Junkyard Tuscan Slayer. So this particular lightsaber is installed with uh, a master chassis, it's the shadow foil props, uh, council chassis is what he calls it, um, and it's got metal parts to it, it's got um, you know the, the blinking lights for the uh, LED bezels here, it's got an OLED screen, it's got a whole bunch of stuff so we can go ahead and just jump right into it. So first of all we've got a static pommel on here, and we'll just unscrew that and we'll replace it with the vented pommel. A lot of threading on there. So I've got the pommel off and I'm about to replace it. Before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull the chassis out and flip the kill switch. And there we are. All right, so there is the chassis. So before putting the chassis in, I'm gonna go ahead and show it off just a little bit. Right now I've got the uh, world's ugliest battery in here, but uh, I plan to get a, a decal that's uh, more in-universe, blends in better with the, the metal pieces. So we've got uh, sort of rear cover for the battery compartment here with some Arabesh writing. Right above that we've got a bit more Arabesh um, in the chassis itself, as well as the power button on the bottom and the aux on the top. Got some nice detailing in the chassis here from Shadow Foil Props. We've got some nice detailing on the sides here and here as well. Got a nice board cover here. So you pull this, this uh, cover off and you'll see your profi underneath. It's actually magnetic. So I'll go ahead and pop that out really quickly. There's a tab that goes in on the top here and then the bottom section is held on with magnets. And I'll go ahead and show that as well. So here's your tab, slides in to a slot in the chassis there. And then you've got two magnets here that go um, right there. And then here is the profi board. I have it covered in tape there just to make sure that uh, nothing accidentally touches the board. Nothing is going to short circuit it. So um, then you can see I've got the wiring for the two LEDs here. And then the wire channel goes behind the crystal chamber. You've got uh, two accent pixels. So you've got the crystal chamber lit up by two pixels and you can see that is a, a very small crystal. All right, so go ahead and flip the switch. You've got, one thing I really like about this one, it's got off and on, so you can tell which is which when you're wiring it up and that way, once it's wired up, you know which direction is gonna be which. I'm Anakin Skywalker. All right, here is the crystal lit up from above and below. You've got a pulsating on your LEDs there. All right, and then you can also see that the crystal pulses as well. The I'm gonna go ahead and flip it off and then back on one more time so that I can show what the OLED screen, what I have that programmed to do. I'm Anakin Skywalker. Got an animation when it boots up and then it goes to a crystal animation. So it's sort of monitoring the status of the crystal when you go ahead and flip your power button, that will change that status to a more of a um, working analytical status again for the status of the blade. You can see sort of the bar graph going on. And then if you do a blaster, that will uh, change again. Turn it off. Go to the next font and you will have another and one for when the blade goes in as well and of course the crystal will change color with the color of the blade this one's yellow for the pod racing font and i have the fonts organized as i usually do to tell the story of the character we'll go over all of that in a moment uh, once the chassis is back in the hill, but for now I just want to show off a little bit more of the metal components, so I think that looks pretty cool. 
Got a 22 millimeter Veco speaker in here. It's the biggest it can fit. This is actually something I had to do special for the chassis. The connector was supposed to be a stock V2 connector uh, with the long pins. So now the only, the only long pin connector available has the long pins that are actually too short for what this chassis was made for. So I had to special order the pins and then just use them in an existing PCB because uh, the PCB has remained more or less unchanged. So you can use them interchangeably. If you're doing this install yourself, just keep that in mind. The long pin uh, connector that you're gonna buy is not gonna have pins that are long enough. So just keep that in mind. You'll need to get longer pins. You can always reach out to Shadowfoil Props for help. Uh, if you can't figure out what the right model of pins to order are, I reached out to him and he was super helpful with me getting all the parts that I needed, making sure that I had all the right model numbers and stuff like that. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the hilt and we can take a look at it that way. All right, so I'm popping this into the hilt. One word of caution, if you have this hilt or something similar, uh, I would always recommend against having the chassis on while you're inserting it because for this particular hilt, you've got a bit of a lip inside there. So you're going to insert it and your chassis is going to hit a lip where the internal diameter goes down and you're going to have to um, navigate that. And if your pins touch that lip, you could risk uh, short circuiting your board. So I always have the chassis off until I have it seated inside that lip and then I'll turn it on. For this particular hilt and chassis, you're going to want to make sure that you've got it lined up correctly. The buttons here work with the plunger system and the plunger box has two rails on the inside of the hilt. I'm not sure if you can quite see those at the top. And those two rails go in the two slots that go right up to the buttons there. So you're gonna to wanna to have that oriented correctly. One easy way to do that is you're gonna to wanna to make sure your OLED screen is lined up exactly with your, your first grip here and with your box. And once your OLED screen is in, if you need something else to sort of go by, where the two metal pieces meet, right in the middle here, that's where you're gonna to wanna to have it lined up with your center grip and your control box. You have that lined up like that, it'll go in smooth. It's a little bit of a snug fit. So once it's in there, you wanna press it just a little bit more to get it seated right under your plungers. All right, so once you've got that lined up, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and flip your switch to the on position. I'm Anakin Skywalker. All right, so we'll go ahead and just put that the rest of the way in. All right, and I've got my vented pommel here. All right, I've got the chassis seated inside of here. I've got the LEDs blinking. All right, so of the bubbles here that you see, the top one is going to be uh, the auxiliary, so it's gonna be switching fonts for you. And then the bottom one is going to be power. So that's going to be blade on and off, triggering quotes, things like that. So we'll go ahead and go through the fonts first to kind of show the story of the character. So the first font, after you turn your saber on, Skywalker. This is going to be the Kyberphonic um, Tuscan Terminator font, but this is going to be the standard saber sound. So this isn't going to be the sound from the Tuscan camp, it's going to be the standard saber sound that you hear uh, through the rest of the movie when he's using this lightsaber. And so I have this just to be like the sort of default font on the saber. Um, after you move away from this one, you're actually going to go back to the Phantom Menace and through all six films. But this is the one that is the default for the Saber. Every time you turn it on, it defaults back to this font. That way you don't have to go looking for your Attack of the Clones fonts. You can see you've got a change when you turn it on. The buttons then will start to blink. Moving on. All right, so these will of course behave the same. You can change that if you would want to in your config. Since this is a prop, you could change how they blink. You can't change the color because they are just LEDs, but the crystal itself, the crystal will change and the blade also will change. So the first font I've got on here after the default is Young Anakin from The Phantom Menace. That's the Pod Racer font. Got some quotes on here. So most of the quotes that are on here are, I believe, from the pod racing game uh, that was on the Xbox and the PS2, I think it was. 
Um, and then there was also an arcade version as well. And so most of those are um, Jake Lloyd's lines that were recorded for the game. So the next one is actually going to be from the Kenobi show. This is actually still just Kyberphonics Tuscan Slayer font. It's just the standard sound for this saber. Um, I hadn't found anyone who'd made a sound font of Anakin's saber from the flashback scenes of the Kenobi show, but Kyberphonic was kind enough to include those Anakin quotes from that episode of the Kenobi show in the rematch bundle pack. So I decided to take the standard sound font for Anakin Attack of the Clones from Kyberphonic, and I decided to put those quotes in that font. Got force effects, and then if you angle the saber down, you'll switch. Oh, there you are. I was beginning to think you weren't coming. Nice. Good. Then maybe I stand more of a chance this time. Are you ready? Are you? Then let's begin. Don't grow too aggressive, Anakin. Be mindful. The Jedi's goal is to defend life, not take it. Mercy doesn't defeat an enemy, Master. So those quotes will go through that scene and through that sequence with Ewan and Hayden from the Kenobi show because canonically that does take place before Attack of the Clones. Anakin has both of his hands. So that comes right after the pod racer font. Next up. I'm ready for the trials. This is going to be the beginning of Attack of the Clones. It's going to have most of the quotes from the beginning, uh, probably third or so of that movie. You fell into that nightmare, Master, and I rescued you, remember? I haven't seen her in ten years, Master. Annie? My goodness, you've grown. So have you. Or more beautiful, I mean. Well, for a senator, I mean. We will find out who's trying to kill you, Padme. I promise you, we will not exceed our mandate, my young Padawan learner. We will do exactly as the Council has instructed. You're using her as bait. So, that is going to be pretty much through when Anakin and Padme leave for Naboo. I hate them! All right, this is gonna be basically from Padme and Anakin leaving Naboo and going to Tatooine. This is gonna be the Tusken Terminator font, the original uh, Tusken camp sound that Kyberphonic has done. So a really deep growl on that. All right, next up after the Tusken camp. You're gonna pay for all the Jedi that you killed today, Dooku. So this is going to be Anakin towards the end of Attack of the Clones, and this is going to be when he's confronting Dooku. He no longer has this saber in his possession. Um, it's been destroyed in the Geonosian factory, so he's using a clan saber that was lent to him by one of his fellow Jedi. That saber's green, so um, the saber blade will be green to reflect that. Um, the blade plug here does not have any shine through because it's an accurate blade plug, but just know that underneath the PCB is shining green and the blade will also shine green. You can hear it's more of a basic prequel sounding hum. Next up. You're gonna pay for all the Jedi you killed, Dooku. So this is going to be K Sith's chosen one hero font, but it's got quotes from the Clone Wars on it. begins. We meet again, Count. For once, you actually came to do your own dirty work. The next font up. My powers have doubled since the last time we met, Count. Prequel fans will recognize this as the beginning of Revenge of the Sith when Anakin defeats Count Dooku. This is where the fun begins. My powers have doubled since the last time we met, Count. I shouldn't have done that. It's not the Jedi way. I'm not leaving without you, Master. Anakin Skywalker. General Grievous, you're shorter than I expected. So these quotes are going to take you through, again, probably the beginning third or so of the film. Darth Vader. This is when Anakin pledges himself to Darth Sidious, and so this is going to be the Chosen One villain. It's going to include the youngling blasters that that font has, as well as all the uh, quotes that you would expect from that portion of the movie. There are too many of them. What are we going to do? <laughs> Master Skywalker, there are too many of them. What are we going to do? 
What have I done? I will do whatever you ask. I pledge myself to your teachings. Darth Vader. Thank you, my master. The Council's next move will be against the Senate. And that's going to take you right up to around the part where you've got Obi-Wan confronting the newly christened Darth Vader on Mustafar after having killed the Separatist leaders and choking Padme. So that's what's up next. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. These quotes are going to have all the back and forth between Obi-Wan and Anakin. I am becoming more powerful than any Jedi has ever dreamed of. I am more powerful than the Chancellor. I can overthrow him. Together, you and I can rule the galaxy. Make things the way we want them to be. The Jedi turned against me. Don't you turn against me. Liar! You're with him! You brought him here to kill me! You turned her against me! You will not take him from me! I do not fear the dark side as you do. I see through the lies of the Jedi. I have brought peace, freedom, justice, and security to my new empire. Don't make me kill you. Anakin, my allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy! If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. You will try. And then, of course, the font that this has is going to be Battle of the Heroes. And I should mention that all of these sound fonts will have an associated soundtrack with them. The tracks are going to be pretty much what you'd expect for that point in the movie. Uh, but for copyright reasons, I'm not going to play that at this time. Where is Padme? And I should mention, the previous font was Annie 3 from Kyberphonic, and then this is the DV3 that's part of the Annie 3 pack. This is going to be a red blade, red crystal. Yes, Master. Where is Padme? Is she safe? Is she alright? I... I couldn't. She was alive. I felt it. Yes, Master. Alright, so we've got Vader from the Kenobi show and all of the quotes associated with that. So that will have all of the quotes from the first and second interaction between uh, Vader and Obi-Wan. And that is actually from the Kyberphonic rematch bundle pack. Lord Vader. All right. Uh, this is going to be uh, Rogue One, Darth Vader. You do have a great many things to explain. You've got the hallway scene as the track. Next up. Obi-Wan is here. The Force is with him. Got a new hope. And at this point, uh, for a few movies now, Darth Vader has had a very similar lightsaber to this, because most of you probably know that the Anakin Attack of the Clones lightsaber is pretty much the same as the Darth Vader lightsaber, except for two main differences. I say main because there are actually a lot of differences, but the hilt is designed on the same sort of silhouette. The main difference is gonna be the shroud of Vader's lightsaber is black, the second main difference is that the hill is a lot bigger. In canon, you could probably say that's to accommodate the fact that Vader now has these larger, mechanical, clunkier limbs than uh, Anakin in Attack of the Clones did. He was a 19-year-old kid. Um, this was probably a lot more comfortable, right? Whereas once he's half-mechanical being, comfort isn't really such a big deal anymore. And of course, he's also a Sith, so comfort, again, not something that he's probably concerned about. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to the father. 
So this is gonna be the Empire Strikes Back font. It's gonna have most of the quotes between uh, Vader and Luke, as well as some other associated Vader quotes from that movie. That name no longer has any meaning for me. This is going to be the beginning of Return of the Jedi, and then I've got one for the end as well of Return of the Jedi. Tell your sister you and then we're back to the default. So I'm gonna go through the fonts themselves quickly so you can hear the introductory quote that each font has and hear how it tells the story of the character when taken as a whole. Now this is pod racing. Mercy doesn't defeat an enemy, master. I'm ready for the trials. I hate them. You're gonna pay for all the Jedi that you killed today, Dooku. You're gonna pay for all the Jedi you killed, Dooku. My powers have doubled since the last time we met Count. Darth Vader. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy. Where is Padme? Anakin's gone. I am what remains. Lord Vader. Prepare a boarding party. Obi-Wan is here. The Force is with him. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. That name no longer has any meaning for me. Tell your sister, you've arrived. So that kind of tells the story of Anakin from his childhood on Tatooine to, you know, breaking free of his Sith chains on the Death Star. All right, here it is with a blade. So before I finish the video, I just want to go over a few things that I learned doing this install that might help you if you want to do this install on your own. Most installs are pretty straightforward because the pieces that are required for the install are pretty common pieces within the community and they're pretty readily available. That was different for this one. So this install that I did was actually a bit trickier because the chassis for it is a couple years old now. So some of the pieces like for example, the PCB have been updated and the newer versions aren't compatible with the chassis. All of the pieces are still available if you know where to look. In my case, one of the pieces that I needed, like I mentioned earlier, were the pins for the PCB. I needed the long version uh, of version two and not the long version three pins. Those are still available. You just need to know where to look. Some other notes would probably be that the crystal chamber itself does not use regular accent pixels like you might be familiar with. So this is like a regular accent pixel. It's just a small little dot that fits in most chassis. It's got um, some solder pads on the bottom. This hilt, however, was not made to use those. Uh, those are a little bit too big for the space in the chassis for the crystal chamber. The chassis was built to utilize Vs. So if you can't tell what that is just by me showing you, um, I'll show you a strip. So it's a pixel strip and you will cut these off. You'll cut two of them, one for the top and one for the bottom, and you'll wedge them in. The chamber itself was made originally to accommodate these larger pixels, so 5050 is the model number of those, but I had some trouble getting those to fit in, and I had a lot better luck with these smaller 3535s. The brightness is pretty comparable, especially if you're just talking about a single pixel, and because there are two of them, it worked out pretty well. The pixels really work well together and the, the crystal shows up really bright. I don't recommend using these. If you can get them to fit in your chassis, fantastic job. I was not able to really get it to fit. It has some resistors and things that you would really have to trim really close to and uh, maybe even try to cut them off and uh, just to get them wedged into the chassis where they go. So I would suggest going with the 3535s. But again, if you're expecting to be able to use a regular pixel dot with these, um, you will have to plan accordingly because I had some extra of these and I figured easy enough, that's pretty much what all accent pixels um, for crystal chambers require, but not in this case. So plan for that, plan for the pins and everything else is pretty standard. I actually used a Profi 3.9 in this hilt. This is the first Profi 3.9 that I did, um, just worked out for the timing of it. Um, this hilt took me a while to install just because all of the parts were difficult to find, like I mentioned. 
Another thing you're gonna want to keep in mind is that your battery tabs are gonna be these kind of battery tabs, and these are gonna be familiar to you if you have done shadow foil props chassis before. Both the positive and the negative version of those battery tabs are going to come like this. So you've got your spring-loaded section for the battery there. This is your negative tab. And then you've got a little tail on it right there. And you're going to have to trim it to be like this, where it's flat on the bottom. They don't make them like this, um, so you'll have to trim it yourself. That was a bit tricky. I had to go through a few different iterations to get it to fit the chassis just right. The chassis is a little finicky about what it will and will not take. So I would order, I would suggest ordering like five positives and five negatives, just cause they're like 30 cents a piece or something like that. So it's worth doing that. Once you get the hang of trimming them, then you won't have that much of an issue. For a lot of these, what you can do is just kind of bend the tail back and forth until it snaps. If you have like sheet cutters, you can use those to cut it. Wire cutters maybe. Um, that you may have a little more trouble with that, especially if they're kind of curved, but for the most part, it's not too tricky. Um, you just kind of want to get it relatively straight and flat and it'll fit in there. Same for the positive. The positive comes with a tail as well and you'll have to trim that off. I also suggest probably sanding those sharp edges down so you don't cut yourself. There's also not a whole lot of room to run all your wires. So be really careful with your wire management. Um, You'll have to run them up the channels and then behind the crystal chamber. So just be really careful with your wire management, basically. Once you actually get up to where the profi board sits, which is up here, you do have a good amount of room behind the board. So um, if you have a little bit of slack behind the board, that wouldn't be a problem. Your main problem is just gonna be in your channels throughout here. You will wanna be careful when you are soldering to your LEDs up here. The closer you solder to the LED, the faster it can burn out the life of your LED. So. You wanna be careful because you need to get kinda of close to your LED so that you are saving room in your chassis, but you don't wanna just sit on there. You wanna just off and on really quick. That is the Watto's Tuscan Slayer. This is the Gen 2 Tuscan Slayer. So my understanding is it's a little bit more accurate than the Gen 1 and the Gen 3 as of now because it's got a bit of a deeper groove here that the Gen 3 changed, and I'm not sure about all the differences with the, with the Gen 1, but that is the Watto's Tuscan Slayer with the Shadow Foil Props Master Chassis. This install took me quite a while to complete just because I had all the, like I said, all the components to modify, all the special components to find and to order. Um, and then I actually had to do a little modification of the chassis itself um, just to make everything fit super smooth, super nice. So I'm really happy that this one's done and that I get to show it off and make a video about it. So thank you everybody for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm excited to have another one for you in the future.